Introducing from St. Joe, Missouri, weighing 240 pounds, Mike George. From Hamilton, Canada, weighing 239 pounds, Dewey Robinson. From Boston, Massachusetts, weighing 270 pounds, Rufus R. Jones. From Dunkirk, Indiana, weighing 244 pounds, Roger Kirby. From Tulsa, Oklahoma, weighing 246 pounds, Jerry Brown. From Memphis, Tennessee, weighing 230 pounds, David Price. It's six-man tag team action, and it's a good thing we interviewed Dick the Bruiser, because that gave Ollie Hofstetter and crew a chance to put ringside back together. When he threw Hernandez, the bruiser I'm talking about, over the table, into the backdrop, and then backwards into the cement wall. Hey, Hernandez is a big, tough, strong kid. Great future in the business. But he jumped the bruiser from behind, and you know Dick's state of mind right now. That just wasn't the thing to do. That was vintage Dick the bruiser right there. You think the new bruiser's gone soft? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. And Dick explained exactly why he came into the ring with that robe, why he stole the robe, took the title belt, but gave it back. Of course, he didn't have much choice there. He lose the title match because of it. And it means too much. There's too much prestige, too much honor, too much money tied up with a gold belt that represents the world heavyweight champion. It dates back to 1905. Think of that now. 77 years, that gold belt, and our likeness to it has represented the finest in professional wrestling. And the finest in professional wrestling right now by virtue of ownership of that belt is Ric Flair. They called Dick the Bruiser the uncrowned world champion after that controversial match last March. But the fact remains that when they go into their showdown, the best of three falls, Flair is going to wear the belt. The question is, who wears it going out of that ring? You know, Larry, I can't help it as I sit here you get the goosebumps, you get all shook up, you get sacked up because here in the studio of KPLR, you've got about 300 people hollering, Bruiser, Bruiser, Bruiser. Can you just imagine uh, that night with about 20,000 people as they spot Dick the Bruiser coming down the aisle hollering, Bruiser, Bruiser, Bruiser. That's got to get him all sacked oh, up. It's got to get Rick Flair sacked up. Yeah. Uh, and he wants to sign it. Yeah, that, boy, that's, that's a good point, Mick. It gives you goosebumps. <laughs> that, 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 that chant, <laughs> it's haunting. And I'm sure it's going to haunt Rick Flair. Up and over the top goes David Price. Compliments of Dewey Robertson. I don't know what they'll chant when Robertson squares off with Dory Funk Jr. because they're our two favorites. Two very popular wrestlers and two very talented wrestlers who both want to win so badly because they know the winner, along with some other victories, naturally might well be in line for a crack at the winner between the Bruiser and Flair. Flair was just en enraged is too soft of a word. Enraged is an understatement. I mean, when he was standing there, he wasn't looking at the camera. He didn't care about anything. What has he done to me? My God, he took a shotgun and blew my pride apart. Flair was just, oh, I don't know how to describe it. I mean, he was just, just so incensed, so utterly enraged and out of control. That's going to be something. He forgot about Art Cruz, and Art kept getting his uh, Licks it, punches yeah. in her, yeah. He nearly got beat because he forgot about Art Cruz, and he finally managed to catch Cruz in the figure four, and he didn't waste any time playing with that figure four. I mean, he stretched it out, yanked that top leg over. Art was lucky he walked out of that ring with his ligaments intact. Whoa, what a moment. There have been so many predictive bruiser. All the honors he's won. All the main events he's been in, all the victories he's had, only one thing, only one thing has eluded him. Flair's got it. The Bruiser almost had it once, and there are certainly those who would tell you he should have had it then. But now is the chance, his best chance ever. Maybe it's his last. Certainly his best chance ever. When you match them up on Styles, Flair and the Bruiser, Flair, more finessed, more of a finesse type wrestler, a gambler, not as heavy, not as strong as a bruiser for all his great physical skills. I'm not taking anything away from Ric Flair. He's been a great champion, and he's a fantastic athlete. I expect he's going to be at the top of this business for years and years to come. But you match up his style to the bruisers, and you can see where he's got some problems because the bruiser is the opposite in many ways. And he's ready. He's ready. Mike George twisting the arm of Jerry Brown. 
And don't forget that next weekend, wrestling from other cities will be featured right here, same time, same place. In fact, if you see a new face or an old favorite you'd like to have on Wrestling at the Chase, write to us in care of KPLR-TV. There's a chance for you to be a talent scout, in fact. See somebody you like? Let us know. Write us. And certainly every effort will be made to bring someone here that you want to see. Wrestling from St. Louis is back the weekend of July 3rd and 4th. Ten minutes left. Ten minutes. Most falls to curfew. Robertson, George, and Jones is Jerry Brown, Price, and Kirby. Oh, Robertson, what a move on. Jerry Brown while holding him in a hammerlock, slamming him, and Brown's in trouble. He makes a tag with Kirby. As psyched up as the bruiser and flarer, Robertson is sky high, too. Big chance against Dory Funk, Jr. Then an interesting matchup of some of their favorite holds. I won't say all because it's like Dory Jr. Robertson is proficient with more things than just the thing he has become known for, which is the figure four leg lock. Dory Jr., of course, has made the spinning toe hold the foundation of his success. But there are counters to both holds. From the figure four leg lock, if you can hook someone's head, you can take them into an inside cradle. From the spinning toe hold, if you're on the receiving end, and you can get rolled over. You can trip the man off balance, and from Robertson's point of view, go right into the figure four leg lock. But there are so many other holes that could come into play, a real wrestling test between Robertson and Funk. Robertson flips, Curry up and over. Arm drag. Jerry Brown started to come in, referee Eddie Smith stopped him, and Robertson played safe, drug Kirby over to the corner where Dewey could tag Rufus R. Jones. Jerry Brown begins yelling, go Roger, go. But he doesn't get exactly the same response. He'd yell no if he way. said, go Bruiser, go. <laughs> to the crowd, he was starting to yell, Bruiser, Bruiser, Bruiser. No, and he's not even in sight. In fact, they're standing in the bleachers yelling, Bruiser, Bruiser, Bruiser. I tell you, Larry, like I say, 20,000 people, there'll be a traffic jam going up the highway. <laughs> they hear that. You're going to hear that down the hill. You may even hear that oh. down the lows and further south. I'll tell you, it won't be the same on the hill. We're right in the backyard. <laughs> Rufus R. Jones twisting that arm. We're talking about the, the, the big card coming up. We shouldn't overlook something else important to the community coming up, and that's on July 10th at the Francis Field in Washington University, the St. Louis Police Relief Association Celebrity Softball Game. Of course, the wrestlers have been well represented over the years there. Devon Erickson, Pat O'Connor, and Bulldog Bob Brown. Mickey and I will be there, so mark it on your calendar for July 10th. The Police Relief Association softball game at Washington University. Flying mare by Dewey Robertson. Robertson with a roll-up cradle on David Price. Count of one, two. Oh, Price managed to slip a leg away. And Chief Camp will be pitching his last game for the That's police right. release. Chief Eugene Camp, who I might add, is a big wrestling fan, has long been a supporter of wrestling. He's at most of the matches. Robertson pulled into the corner by David Price. A lot of the policemen are big supporters of wrestling. Go right from the high command down to the guys on patrol. Of course, those are troopers too, boy, out there doing a job, a tough job every day. And nobody ever says thanks. So true. So Jerry true. Brown and Dewey Robertson are in there right now. No falls have been scored yet. Brown drops Robertson. Throat first across the top rope. And we don't say thanks often enough to the great fans of the area. Their enthusiasm, their intelligence, their sportsmanship, staying away from the stupid stuff, the throwy, the, the ridiculous stuff that you see in some other sports. The wrestling fans know it takes an idiot to do something like that. And we don't have idiots. Dewey Robertson trapped in the corner by Kirby, Jerry Brown, and David Price. Triple team briefly. Robertson dropped by Kirby. May look like there are six men in that ring in those two big tag matches. Grayson Murdoch against D.B. Austin Rhodes. Patera and Blackwell against the Von Eric boys, David and Kerry. Jerry Brown with a forearm smash on Dewey Robertson. Brown pounding on Robertson. Yeah, you got to give credit to the promoter, Pat O'Connor. I mean, Matt he is carrying on a tradition. I mean, he came up with some card, I'll tell you well, that. Well, listen, Pat would be the first to tell you, and I would too. So while you sit down with that consultant, Sam Muchnick. Say, hey, what do you think? Five minutes left, five minutes. 
Five minutes remain in curfew. And the referees are saying the tag was not legal and Jerry Brown belongs in there. Mike George makes sure he gets in there. Forearm smashed by Mike George. Brown caught in the stomach by a shot from Mike George. The always reminds me of Bobby Manigault, former world champion, a lot of great matches here in St. Louis in the 40s and 50s. Brown makes a tag to Price. Mike George is a man in a hurry today, isn't he? As soon as somebody gets tagged, Mike pulls him in. He made a mistake. Oh, is he trapped? Here comes Rufus. George still trapped. Jerry Brown doing the work underneath, holding on to that leg, trapping Mike George in the corner. The referees are getting Kirby back, and I don't think at all the confusion. They see Jerry Brown underneath there hanging on to the leg. And right now, George is waiting on top, and I don't know if Brown could go if he wanted to. He got squeezed pretty good. Don't forget, he was underneath George, Kirby, and Price. Well, I'll tell you one thing, though. Jerry Brown was thinking there. He held him in that corner. He held onto that leg and tried to catch his breath at the same time. Price over the top. Mike George really tags. Price with a knee lift into the stomach. Kirby flails away at Mike George. Hooks the head, suplex by Roger Kirby on Mike George. He covers Kirby. Kirby rather covers George. George throws Kirby off. Getting lost in the dot and heavy action. It's a good thing we got some out of town programs coming up. I need a break. Oh, I tell you, this has been some day. <laughs> Wrestling from St. Louis, don't forget, we'll be back on television July 3rd and 4th. We'll be around for that. Three minutes left, three minutes. The Greco-Roman back body drop by Jerry Brown. He crawls across the shoulder of Mike George and Dewey Robertson breaks it up. Tag made to Price. George trying to get over and make a tag. He's still stunned and he couldn't get to his partners. Price, oh, tried to backflip George and George caught him with a kick. Tag made to Rufus. Rufus winds up and drops him. An elbow smash to the head by Rufus R. Jones. Price hold to the ropes. Up and over the top. Rufus has a freight train rolling. Body slam. Rufus goes for the pin. Brown breaks it up. Kirby was there too. Roberts is after Kirby. George is after Brown. Oh. All six men in the ring. It's a Donnie Brook. Six men, two referees, four cameramen, one director. And you and I may find somewhere safe. And it wasn't even believe. safe when the bruiser was out. Two minutes left, two minutes. David Price staggers to his feet. Head butt by Rufus. Rufus covers Price. Count of one, two, three. That is the first fall. The first fall belongs to...